Whole Foods did do it once too. It's yes. down again. Whole Foods has yeah. it in the, uh, you know, in the essential, oil. essential oils section. It actually has in the homeopathic product section usually. And you can also order it from Herb Farm, and if you tell them you're a massage therapist, you get a 50% discount. Wow. Okay. So we mentioned it. Five zero. Yeah. Wow. You have to order a hundred dollars worth of product each time you order, and then the shipping is free. Now what I'm doing is I'm spreading this so that, you know, here's the spinous processes. I'm spreading it and working it up and down into the laminar groove. Now can you heat this up or you can't? Oh, no, no, no. Never, Never ever. You wouldn't want to. Does it okay. bad so much? Like, because I've had mine finished. Like I would it. smell it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's packed. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's in olive oil. It's in olive oil. It's I know, olive oil. Uh, like, some folks will keep it refrigerated until they use it, but then it gets cloudy and thick, and yeah. you know how olive oil so gets store room temperature. Okay. It gets more, sort of, it gets kind of molasses you know, at a certain point, which is usually, like, a signal for me. It's like, oh, time to get a new bottle. Yeah. Any questions? So this yes. is like an, an herb that's been... Mashed up and then added to an oil, or how does it? Well, the way it's made is you gather the flowers of the plant uh -huh. when they're in full bloom, and then you chop them up and crush them, and then they're covered with olive oil and it's allowed to sit for a month to three months time, and then it's strained also. And uh, the contraindication is solar sensitivity, mm -hmm. right? We talked about that. You could get a sunburn. Yeah, it's quota sensitive. But it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier, it doesn't cross the placenta bar barrier, and it does not end up in breast milk. So you don't have to be concerned that there's going to be a. There's no indication. contraindication in that regard. You, what? No contraindication. No, none at all. Safe for nursing and pregnant women. What about animals? Well, the thing about animals is that they have fur. And you know what happens when you rub a cat's fur the wrong way? Well, not only that, but kitties and dogs tend to lick off anything that's on their fur, and it isn't really intended for oral use, so I don't know about that. No, I was thinking of it was one that has, like, a short of it. But there's fur. Mm. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, you're not going to go and have that for Well, then go for it. When you're those burless cats or something. Okay, so, um, I'm, I'm going to be working slowly up down the laminar groove. You, there are a variety of ways you can do this. The way I, I like to do it, it works for me, is I crisscross my thumbs. The spinous processes are right in the middle, and I use this like a track. Some people do it with their knuckles. Some people do it with their fingers. You know, whatever way you can do it that's comfortable. And I'm going to engage this. And usually, I'm going at a nice, slow, at the pace, the tissue starts to move. In the laminar groove. How are you doing, Miss Lynn? Yummy. So you have, you have both thumbs going down the laminar groove? I do. Okay. They're, they're crisscross, so there's a gap between them for your spinous right. processes to fit. Right. And Luke is going to get her one. Oh, it's already starting to happen. She's a quirk one. She is. You'll notice what's happening, the rippling of the skin in front of me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a characteristic of... This is it starts to work its way into the nooks and crannies of the spinous process in, in the nooks and crannies of the discs. This puckering effect. And you know, the first time I saw this, which was at the end of the day at a spying class with Morel when she first decided to ship St. John's wet oil. Again, we were all kind of like tired and we're sort of looking and sitting comfortably in the chair and all of a sudden, I'm thinking to myself, wow, I must be tired, because if I didn't know better, it looks like the spine is starting to liquefy and become flexible, and the skin around it is puckering and moving in front of it like a wave. And I thought maybe I was, like, just having some weird moment. And then I realized the fact that the rest of the room was now moving really close, staring at it, and having exactly the same shared experience. Now, of course... The first thought is that you're probably doing lots of repetitive muscle stripping, and that's why this phenomenon is happening. So both I and two other individuals independently decided to try this with a variety of other creams, oils, and other substances that did not have St. John's wort oil. None of them produced this effect after 11 different substances. So say what you will, this is some pretty darn good stuff.
Ooh, yeah. Look at this. Look how it just outlines the spine. Look at that. And this is not only good for the spine. It seems to work really well, my clients tell me, for other disc-like structures. You know, the TMJ area, which has its own disc, but also for the meniscus. And I've had some really nice success working with this on the plantar fascia. How would you apply it on the meniscus and the TNJ? Hmm? Like, just rub? Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's an easy one for people to do for themselves. How about the, the spine power? Yeah. Well, yep. there's the one that's used it there. Rub it in? Yep, rub it in and basically is sort of rub it in and do it by extending your toes, sort of like that plantar fascia release we did. Mm -hmm. So rub it in and then sort of just extend and a little stripping and then flex and extend and a little stripping and a little flex. It works really nicely. So you mean along the shortest tendon? No, actually along the whole bottom of the foot. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that, that area down there is thick like a piece of canvas. And also, Gary, you talked about the little disc-like structure in the uh, side as well. Yes. I mean, as you'll notice, there's a little glistening area over uh, around the PSIS. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to go in there at the end of this. I'm going to be working that little semicircle around the PSIS. Because that's a little spot that needs some love, too. And that's a Gary innovation to this. Because when I learned it, it was just up and down around the groove and you stop it safely. Mm. Now, what also happens here is, is, like, when you first start to apply it, you'll find that places that need it the most will suck it from your fingers like a ray of back. So all of a sudden, you'll do one stroke and come up halfway up the back, and your fingers are bone dry, which usually tells you that that place needs a lot of love. Ooh. Hmm? Even if you don't get back work for a while, can it still be done? Because I'm trying to get my back to be not flat, not flat. Oh, yeah, you can use this anytime. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is just... The more you use it... The nicer things get. Yeah. The more acute of a situation, the more frequent applications would be the most beneficial. But I know folks that do it with their SIG O's, like, once a week. Here I'm going to go... oil. <laughs> I'm going to go around the PSIS. So here I am, the back end of the crest. Just going around the iliac crest. Ooh. Boop. Ooh. Got some crunchies over here, <laughs> which are now softening. Boop. Ooh, look, here we go. See how it's bunching up, moving out of the way. The crunchies are going. Ooh, look at that. Watch the hip. I engage. It goes all the little hip moves over to the other side. Ooh, that's nice. Yummy. One more time. Watch this section. Ooh, look at that. A little groove formed. A little racetrack. I know. Uh. Yes. Ooh, look at that. That's a lovely thing. That's cool. Nice. I worked with a guy who came to see me one time in November, and he had blown his L5S1 disc. I mean, it was like one of those discs that they can't even support their own weight. Right. You know, really... And he's, he's an athlete, mm -hmm. he still is, athletic guy, very, very nice person, not a lot of money in the family. And uh, he uh, was really bummed out because he was planning on competing in a cross-country skiing marathon called the American Birkenbrenner that happens in Wisconsin every February. And that was a huge deal for him. 
and I worked with him one time, and I just balanced, worked to balance his pelvis and L5, and told him about St. John's Wood Oil, and he never came back for another session, but his, his wife did St. John's Oil on his back every night without fail, and he competed in that ski race at the end of it. It was healed by February, once a day after patient. And how, what period of time would you say? He started in November. Oh, okay. So December, January, February. Three, three, four three, months. At least three years. That's bad.